I remember the cathedral dean, Father Michael Branch, saying at his induction that he was a cathedral boy. Well, you've got another one here as well, because I too am a cathedral boy. I was baptized here in St. George's Cathedral. My family lived just down the road and we came here to Sunday Mass and I was ordained here in 1983. So the cathedral is a very special place. It's like coming home every time I come here. And so today it's a great joy and privilege to celebrate this Mass on the Patronal Feast Day. Our celebration today, we hear the words of St. John's Gospel taken from the Farewell Discourse. Jesus makes it clear that being a disciple will cost nothing less than everything. The disciple will suffer the same fate as Jesus himself. And Jesus uses the word hatred and persecution. There is no whitewashing in what it means to follow him. The martyrs from the beginning of the church gave witness to these words by laying down their lives. And St. George, our patron, is one of them. From at least the early fifth century, mention is made of St. George, where he is remembered as a martyr, killed during the time of the Roman Emperor Diocetian. George is thought to have been a soldier from Lydia in Palestine. It was in this region that the emperor launched a devastating persecution against Christianity. He began by purging the army of Christian soldiers. Early records suggest that George gave his good goods to the poor and openly confessed Christianity before the authorities. In this, he was an example of the early church, which we read about in the Acts of the Apostles. The year for his death is around 303. In St. George, we have an example of a perfect Christian, a faithful, brave, and compassionate, and kind man. And it is to that which each one of us is called. You may be thinking, what about the dragon? Well, perhaps the myth of the dragon is an allegory to describe George's own struggle with the forces of evil. George is a reminder to us in our time that if we are to be authentic disciples, we will face obstacles both in ourselves and externally, which need to be faced with courage. The battles we face may not cost us our lives like the martyrs, but will cost us something of ourselves. When we encounter difficulties or trials, it's easy to be in denial or to wish things would go away or even to run away. We look to St. George for that courage, not to give up, but to persevere as God's grace is greater than our own human weaknesses. 
as Saint Oscar Romero reminds us, we cannot do everything. There is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter in and do the rest. The emblem of Saint George is the red cross on a white background, an emblem which many artists, especially in the Renaissance, have used as a banner, a banner held high by the risen Christ as he comes out of the tomb, a victory sign over death. In the baptistry of the cathedral, we see that same image, which is shown so beautifully. It is from Christ's victory on the cross and his resurrection that we are given grace, grace to transform our weaknesses, to become signs of faith and courage to the people of our own time. We turn today asking for St. George's intercession to bear witness to that victory over sin and death, which has been won for each one of us by our risen Lord and shared with us in baptism. We ask that we will be open to what God can do in us, to be open to what God wants of us. This evening, it's fitting that we pray for peace, especially in Palestine and in Ukraine and in Russia, countries that have a particular devotion to St. George. St. Paul reminds us that the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us to bear witness to Christ. We ask that we will follow the example of Saint George, our patron.